Back at Information On Demand 2012 in the Expo, I'm Scott Lanningham with Todd Watson. Our guests right now are Frank Van Ham, an IBM master inventor and information visualization and visual interaction expert, and Graham Wills, who is Rave Chief Architect and Statistician at IBM. This is Frank, that's Graham, right? Yep, that's right. Okay. Thank you all for joining us. Yeah, awesome. good to be here. They're here to talk with us about visualization as, an, as being indispensable in data analysis. So, I mean, right off the top, what role does visualization play in analytics? And, you know, is it, I mean, I, being humorous about it, is it just a, a fancy add-on bells and whistles thing, you know, and, we, and it can, we can do analytics just fine without it, like we don't need heated seats in a car or whatever, or is it really indispensable? Well, I wouldn't say you need, don't need heated seats in a car, <laughs> depending where you come from, but um, no, I think it's more in the, in the sense of the, the safety mechanisms and the extra stuff, which, which goes beyond the, the basics and provides added power. Uh, I'd say uh, visualization is an empowering technology. It's something which enables you to take something where you have some experience, some knowledge, some information, and present it in a way which allows people to make actions from it, take decisions, move forward. Yeah. So, so I think visualization is indispensable because it's, it's about context, right? Analytics, they don't have any sense of context. So humans, they, they understand context and they understand the context their business works in. And computers are really good at you know, doing raw computational um, operations. But sort of visual, uh, visualization is sort of what ties these two together. I can have a computer you know, uh, tell to me what the results of a computation are so mm -hmm. that I understand the context of those results and I can make decisions based on them. It's a, it's a necessary element in the UI. Yeah, in exactly. This whole experience. Yeah. Yeah, one thing which Frank mentioned, which I think is quite important, is that, is that connection between both the person and the machine. Computers are very good at a certain set of things, but they're not intuitive. They don't have the good domain grasp. If you go to someone who's an expert in the stock market, they'll use computers, but they're going to use their intuition to know when to buy and sell, exactly. to make decisions. So visualization is kind of a channel where we can go between the, the computer-generated reports, the analytics, uh, up to decision-making and present them in a way which makes the best possible decisions possible. Yeah, okay. yeah so, for me it's... Oh, well, I was going to say, in, in your conversations with clients, they're not saying, hey, I've got my spreadsheet and my pivot tables and all is well in the world? Not so much, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but that's a good place to start. We want to start out from what people know no, and yeah. then develop more. Uh, if you have something very basic and simple, I I'm not going to tell people don't use a bar chart. But in general, with the way the world is moving, with the big data, the variety, the volume of data, and the, and the speed at which it comes into us, mm -hmm. we need visualizations which are tailored to do more with your data, to get more out of it than, than a spreadsheet yeah. can do. So talk about some of the differences that, that visualizations can make in data analysis for an organization. Well, I mean, Excel is like, a, like Graham said, it's a really good starting point, right? But once you see actually what, what your numbers represent to you, you might be tempted to ask like more questions. Mm -hmm. But the, the trick is how do I, you know, how do I get that information um, to me to be able to see what questions I want to ask? And then how do I get the results from ask, actually asking those questions to a system? How do I get them back in a sensible way? So f for me, visualization is, is sort of the medium that, that's between the, the human user and the computer system mm -hmm. that I can both use to you know, ask questions to a system. For example, by not by composing some really complicated SQL query to get more information, but actually in the chart as I'm looking at it, say, okay, you know, this data point looks interesting. Now show me more information about this. So what, what extra can I learn? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it, it's a very efficient communication channel. One of the new things we're finding a lot of is with big data, you end up with a lot of different models you want to look at, and you need to see data at different scales simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So a concrete example, I've been working on an economic simulation data where someone's simulating the entire economy running at a daily level for many years, millions, maybe even billions of data points. You want to have visualizations which summarize the overall effect but you also want to look at the unusual features. I, mean, I want to see what happens September 12, 2008. You need what happens, yeah. You, don't, you want to look at those unusual cases. If you're involved in risk or banking or any kind of thing when you predict the future, you don't just care about the mean effect. You also care about individual scenarios. Yeah. So a lot of what we're seeing is things like that, where we pe people need to be able to look at the overall data, but then also specific areas within that overall context. Yeah, and understand how those areas actually fit in the overall context. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's like the famous parable of you know philosophers trying to determine uh, or looking at an elephant, right? You know, one has the trunk, one has the tail. So you need 
you need to be able to get both the overall picture and see how the details actually integrate in that overall picture. I, I see Just a new skill set emerging here, it seems to me. Organiz we've talked about organizational right. aspects of all of this. It seems mm -hmm. to me you're, there's a new job role here, is there not? Somebody who can understand the analytics and the big data, but also can take that and, as you say, turn it into pictures that are meaningful to people right. and helpful to people. Well, one of the things... Go ahead, oh, yeah. So, so that's, that's actually, that's interesting you mentioned, because that's another role of visualization in a sense, right? Is It doesn't only help me to sort of dig through my data and understand how, you know, different, you know, very detailed features might relate to the overall um, sort of context of my data, but when I want to explain what I found to somebody else, you know, a, a table just doesn't cut it. So. In, in many ways, you can use visualization as, again, a medium to communicate like complicated data concepts from one person to another. So if I have to go back to one of my stakeholders and say, okay, this is what I found in the data, you know, I can, it's better if I come back with a you know, very compelling visualization mm -hmm. than just giving them you know, a list of raw numbers yeah, that I found. Yeah. And one of the things which we're doing with an IBM at visualization is to look at how we can bring those kind of visualizations get them faster to the domain experts. Those are the kind of people who know the problem and know the situation. They're the people who can apply their intuition and their insight, their mm -hmm. years of experience. That's extremely valuable. We don't want that disconnect, you know, that, that kind of missing gap you're yeah. in, the people who can bring them the, the information they need. So we're working on designs for visualization, which will make it much easier for them to do it, so they don't need to have this huge skill set from domain expert all the way through to like graphics programmer. Mm -hmm. We want to narrow that gap so the domain experts, if you're an expert in the stock model, you can do the stuff you want to do. If you're an expert in visualization, you do the visualization and find means to channel them together so that we can have a much more effective way of producing visualizations and making decisions of, of real data. It sounds like, you're, in your, dis your discussion about this, how much of the visualization capability is, is being built into the tools and how much of it is the way that the user extracts the visualization from the data? And, I mean, are, is, are, are, is the idea here that we're going to get people a lot farther along that, that curve of, of, of the results that they're getting are visualized enough yeah. so that they're maybe with some slight tweak they're really ready for presentation or, or what? Yeah, so we're, we're trying to get a tool set so that people have a much broader variety of visualizations they can choose from. Okay. Um, typically, visualizations have been set as form in taxonomies like bar charts, line charts, and so on. Our system is a language-based one, which means it's easier for people to, to come up with new, flexible visualizations, as Frank said, specific to various scenarios. Right. And, and that enables us to, to kind of bridge that gap so that we have people writing those tools, but in a way which is easier to do than with a traditional kind of programming type environment. You, you wrote a blog post a few years ago, and I thought it was interesting to bring up in the context of this, and, you, and uh, it was on how to speak visualization, yeah. in which you said visualizations are too numerous, too diverse, and too exciting to fit well into a taxonomy that divides and subdivides, and you suggest sort of going the opposite direction of composing visualizations. So can you talk about uh, b building up a vision of what data is saying instead of the approach that dissects it for understanding, I guess. Sure. So uh, I'll take an example. Suppose you're interested in looking at some uh, Twitter traffic. We've okay. seen some examples of that. It's very relevant now with lots of um, election topics flooding the airwaves. So what you can do there is you start off with your base data and um, the traditional way would say, well, I've got these 12 chart types. Which one of these am I going to use? And you envisage the whole process and fit it in. Maybe it'll work, maybe it doesn't. Okay. Instead, what we're advocating is, is a language-based solution where you start off saying, well, this is time-based, so I'm going to map one dimension onto time. How does that look? Oh, it's okay, but I need a volume of data, so we'll map counts onto the other dimension, bring that chart up that way. Mm. Then we might have some text analytics encoding information, like whether it's positive or negative, uh, which is typically the sentiment you tend to get on the debate topics. Uh, and then we can use that to map for colors or shapes and symbols. So we provide those building blocks and allow you to build up so you're not starting from a premise of, I have these fixed taxonomies and I have to fit my data into it. We're starting off from the system of, I have this data and I want to represent it faithfully. Should have had Nate Silver involved in this conversation. I think he would have enjoyed this, right? Yeah, I, know, so, yeah. <clears throat> I really enjoyed his talk this morning. So. Thank you both for stopping by. Uh, what, what do you have left here at IOD for the, for the rest of the day and, and some of tomorrow? Are you still a lot of conversations to have? Yeah, or any I, have a, I have a meeting and a customer advisory board meeting tomorrow talking about visualization again. So. All right. Yeah, we're talking to some customers. A lot of big customers with big data have big problems. And so, yeah, they're looking at visualization to help solve those. Well, thank you both for coming by.
Yeah. Um, Thanks for having us. Uh, again, our guests have been uh, Frank Van Ham, an IBM master inventor and information visualization and visual interaction expert, as well as Graham Wills, who is Rave chief architect and statistician at IBM. I'm Scott Lanningham with Todd Watson. We'll be back with more at Information On Demand 2012.